Hello, this is Craig Mertens, Director of Product Education for Inktavo, the parent company of GraphicsFlow, Inksoft, and Printavo. Really excited to be teaching this class today. This is a topic that's near and dear to my heart. So the, the scope of the class today, we're going to talk about graphics and specifically customizing graphics. So what I'd like to do is I'm going to share my screen real quick here. There we go. So I'm going to start off the, the webcast with uh, just a brief little slide deck because most of the webcast today, we're actually going to be creating things. We're actually making projects and creating things. But I wanted to uh, create a little bit of foundational work uh, in terms of, you know, what we're going to be talking about today. And, you know, boosting your business with the Stock Art Customizer really is the focus of the class. And so what we're going to be doing is talking about how you don't necessarily need a professional graphics program like Adobe Illustrator, Corelldraw, or Affinity Express, um, or, you know, Inkscape to produce graphics at a professional level. If, if that was the barrier to entry into the decorated apparel industry, it would be, I figure there's two things that would have to occur. <laughs> Number one, you'd have to go through the painful learning curve of learning one of those programs. And, uh, you know, I've, I've been using Illustrator since 1988 and Corelldraw since 1996, been at it a while. And I'm still learning, and I, I would not honestly want to go through that learning curve again. It's quite brutal. And I use some, you know, online tools like, you know, Canva and some of those things. But I really honestly can't get the things done in Canva that I would really need to get done in terms of producing professional um, T-shirt graphics. I can do simple stuff, but not the complex things that you like what you're seeing at retail. So you would have to either go through that that learning process um, to learn a pro graphics program. Or you'd have to hire a full-time graphic designer or at least outsource that, uh, which would be kind of expensive. That would be a pretty huge barrier to entry. Now, obviously, if you're just doing simple lines of text, it's not a big deal, but that's not really where the market's headed. People want the same level of graphics that they're seeing, you know, on the sidelines of the, the professional sports teams or when they're, they're on social media or what they're seeing in the retail stores. So producing graphics at a high level is, you know, something that's done by people that are highly qualified, highly trained been doing it a while and we're blessed to have a, a staff of really talented people that produce our graphics. The The thing that gets me excited is when, when I first started seeing this technology that, you know, initial, initially was called direct to film DTF, I, I was I was a little bit skeptical, uh, be candid, a little bit skeptical because it seemed a little bit too be, good to be true. And what I mean by that is the industry has been searching for a way to create heat transfers on light and dark substrates, polyester, cotton, 100% poly, nylon, blends, all of these dis different substrates, both light and dark, um, for a long time. And there's been things that have come out, like the, some of the white toner printers um, using laser transfers. Not super impressed with that. I've, I think there's that technology is a little bit problematic from the point of view of wash durability and it's a multi-step process, kind of slow. Um, that really, for, in my point of view, didn't really solve the problem. Uh, certainly, um, you know, print and cut with like, say, a roll-in printer and then contour cutting around that really kind of limited the type of graphics. So when I first saw the destructive film technology, I was a little bit skeptical until a good friend of mine, Mark, started sending me some transfers to press on my press here at the office, which is now my home office. And I was like, wow, this is just going to change everything. And then I found out about Supercolor and I was very quickly corrected um, by the good folks at Supercolor uh, when they told me, um, Rum said, hey, listen, this isn't a direct to film transfer. This is hybrid digital. And I was like, well, what does that mean? He says, we're not using a solvent inkjet printer to print onto the, the, the plastic, you know, film substrate. And then, you know, print white on top of that. What we're doing is we're actually using a digital offset printer to print onto the substrate. And then we're screen printing the underbase. And that gives us a lot more flexibility in terms of a, a, a white underbase that's going on top of the color so that we can vary that underbase based on the type of printing we're doing. If it's going on nylon or 100% poly, that's one of the brilliant things about super color. So I became a believer pretty quick. And, um, as I showed you earlier, <laughs> I'm wearing the super color transfer on my shirt that was prepared with the graphic that was created in graphics flow earlier. So the, the marriage between the technology was super color creating these wonderful transfers that allow you to grow a business. And what we've done at Graphics Home, creating a, a platform that anyone can utilize, um, has been kind of special. And so I'm going to kind of get into some foundational things first. And, and one of the things I like to, you guys to consider, and I, I've talked about this in the past, is the true cost of custom art development. And I've said this before, um, you know, our, our customers out in the world, they, they don't understand the human capital that's required to create graphics on this level. These are graphics that are created by one of our customers that's super talented, 
Um, these are all remarkable graphics, but unfortunately, you know, a lot of these designs, you know, have a, a fair amount of, of, you know, production uh, time associated with producing them. You know, just illustrating this musky right here. Um, you know, I know what it would take for one of our illustrators to produce that. And, you know, that's three or four hours worth of illustration time. And I can't even imagine the semi truck here, what it took to produce that. And even all the creativity that went into these kind of science script designs. So our, our customers don't understand what it takes to do that, but they expect graphics at that same level. And that there lies part of the problem. And in order to create graphics at this level, you know what you're going to have to do? You're going to have to have a freelance graphic designer who's going to charge you fees. I know what our people um, charge um, domestically to do a graphic like this. Something like this is about $200, $250. This, something like this is $500 to $1,000 when you're having to do custom illustrations on vehicles because there's very few people on the planet that have the skill set to illustrate a vehicle. And a good example of that is what you're seeing like on the, the NASCAR t-shirts. Those are very high-end designs and we have a, a artist that we work with and he does work for those folks and he charges $1,000 a design to charge that. So obviously, you know, this is kind of what our customers want, but it's, it's honestly, it's not practical for them to do that. So if you have an in-house graphic designer, you know, you're going to be paying somebody wages to do that. You know, there's not necessarily a going rate for graphic design fees for a full-time graphic designer, but I would say the range is probably going to be between $20 an hour and as much as $50 or $60 an hour. The people that we contract to do our freelance work for our monthly design templates for Graphics Flow um, cost more than that even. These are some of the elite graphic designers that are what I call t-shirt designers in our industry, not really graphic designers. You can do all that stuff too but they're experienced t-shirt designers. They do work for us, but they also do work for the big retail brands. So you also have the cost of your creative tools. So it'd be things like design software and obviously computers and peripherals. Uh, you have the cost of revisions. That's something that people really don't think of is you have a design that's not really meeting the needs of the client. They want to do a revision. You have to pay for that. And then you have iterations, which would be the same design, but just a variant of that. And so there's always going to be a um, cost associated with that. You have costs associated with any kind of stock images, including fonts, clip art, and design templates. Uh, every end user has their own comfort level with copyrighted material. Um, we have zero tolerance in our organization for utilizing any kind of copyrighted material that we don't own or have a license to use because we're a big company and we have a lot of exposure. And it's, you know, I've said before, it's all fun and games until you get a letter from one of the uh, legal teams for the copyright owner of this artwork. So obviously you want to be real careful about that. And so utilizing licensed graphics that you're licensed to use, I think is a good business practice. Um, internal costs, you know, building custom graphics may require input and time from your marketing or sales team. So, you know, it's a collaborative process. So it may not just be the art team, um, but also be marketing and sales. If you're a one person operation, that's probably not an issue, but it still is a drain on your time. And there's what we call opportunity costs, where if you're consuming a lot of time to do one activity, it's preventing you for, from created doing another activity that may be more profitable to your business, if that makes sense. And then the complexity and variety of deliverables also, will, also can increase your cost. So getting that art prepped um, for your process. One of the things that I really appreciate about Supercolor is if the artwork isn't perfect, they will fix it. And a lot of times you won't even know they did it. And I've worked with other transfer companies in the past and frankly, I feel like I'm being punished when I send my artwork in and I teach this kind of stuff and I still can't seem to get their art specs done correctly. seems like a lot of the order processing systems from some of the transfer companies are designed for the convenience of the company, not the convenience of the end user, if that makes sense. So being able to, to have artwork, I maybe not quite perfect that, you know, having a supplier that'll go in and, and fix it up and work with you to make sure it works and not charge you for that. To me, that's a, a pretty massive benefit. So, so you know, how do buyers select graphics? And we, we're talking, we're going to talk about customizing graphics. But before we even get there, we really have to talk about, you know, how do how does the end user select a graphic? And you know, frankly, most buyers they just go online. So they see something online, or you know, they've seen something out in the world, and they want to do something like that. And and then you also have the you know the issue. I always joke at a customer that. Um, her cousin designed the design for their family reunion and she sent me the artwork and I looked at the artwork and I go, this isn't going to even work on a heat transfer. Somebody's going to have to redraw this. And I had, it, had her send it off to uh, one of the other transfer companies and they 
charged her to redraw the artwork and it was quite a, a quite a uh, endeavor and it still didn't look great on the t-shirt and you know it's a family reunion so you're kind of stuck with the design they did that's just not a good way to do business but you know they the process starts typically with folks that go online and find something and whether they're going to like a custom ink or one of these online t-shirt sites and they're designing it themselves what are they doing it they're designing it themselves they're screen capturing it and they're not buying from custom ink they're taking it to somebody else and they're getting quotes and bids and things so that that in itself is a is somewhat of a dysfunction so buyer going online to find something is going to be somewhat problematic from the point of view you get copyright issues you have to recreate the artwork there's time delays there's all kinds of not so fun things associated with that technique okay the second one buyer already has a graphics they develop so that's kind of like the the example of the client's cousin doing the graphic for the family reunion so because they've already done the graphic doesn't mean it's production ready for a process like screen printing or you know creating a you know hybrid digital transfer from supercolor or setting it up for vinyl so you can cut it on your vinyl cutter or sublimating it there's there's always going to be some work involved in maybe even redrawing it from a bitmap so that it's scalable and it has nice clean em edges and there, there's another aspect of that when when your your business is focused solely on doing what i call doing logos on stuff you do have somewhat of a concentration risk and i was recording a video yesterday and i i one of the things i put in the video was a comment that i received from a, a customer um that was at the indianapolis show um with graphics pro that came up to the booth and so it was interesting there was three people there was the graphic designer there was the uh, owner which i think was was the wife and then there was the other owner who was the husband and they were really excited about what we were doing with graphics flow and the husband was just kind of shooting the whole thing down and he said you know 95 percent of our customers already have the art they come to us with the art and so one of the things that kind of a flyer when i said this i said one of the things that you have to consider is they're not really thinking of you as a creative resource if they're only coming to you with finished art they're not thinking of you as a creative resource they're probably going to somebody else if they need creative done and he, he kind of looked at me like you know it's kind of an awkward moment but he goes yeah you know what you're right uh, he actually agreed with me and they end up becoming a customer so if you're on the webcast welcome aboard <laughs> so but the the point is you know if you're only doing customer provided our work you know buyers are savvy so they know how to go and get quotes and especially have a, a buyer turnover so you had this really you know sweetheart deal where you're just getting orders all the time from this customer and then all of a sudden the orders dry up well you know what happened is the new buyer came in and they started getting quotes and they figured out they can direct import from alibaba or um aliexpress and they you know cut you out of the scheme and they could do that because all you were doing was producing their logo so there's some problems with, with that technology as well and decorator must produce custom graphics and you just have to look at the art development costs it's a not a sustainable strategy on small orders or orders that are, don't produce reorders and I had an interesting experience with a a client of mine that shared with me that you know he, he just had kind of like some guilt about doing all the artwork time that he was spending he's a graphic designer all the artwork time he was spending on these small orders and he says you know frankly if they don't reorder we're probably losing money on this and so i i coached him up a little bit and i said hey listen you probably have all that other artwork that you've done over the years why don't you kind of collect it into categories by style and subject matter and then why don't you upload it to your graphics flow um uh, account so you can create a gallery that looks like this and then the customer you can send the gallery link up to the customer and they can comment on the graphic and pick out their graphics and he was pretty excited about that and that's what he did and the feedback from him was it transformed his business the way he did business so custom graphics need to be kind of reserved and saved for you know when it's appropriate to do custom graphics you know when you have a big enough order to cover the, the production costs and if you have reorder potential, right? You might take a flyer on doing the art development um, if you think there's gonna be reorders. Doesn't always work out, but it's great when it does. And then also the buyer selects from stock designs that can be easily customized. We know a little bit about this because the successor company to Graphics Flow was a company called Digital Art Solutions, which I co-founded with my sister. And we were the first company to produce stock art content for the apparel decoration starting in 1996 my dad actually started the actually it was earlier than that i came aboard in 1996 my dad started doing it in 1992. so he was the first person to create custom stock graphics for apparel decorators prior to that the only clip art you'd really see out there 
was for desktop publishing. And if somebody wanted a cool helmet to go on a football shirt, they would literally have to draw it themselves. So this whole concept of having stock designs as a starting point became a very standard way of doing business. And yeah, I'll take a little credit for that. That's kind of fun. Um, but it's become a standard way of doing business because it's very economical. And so let's let's talk a little bit about some of the value of a customizable stock design and some of the things I really like about using that strategy. You control the whole sales process. You're not sending somebody to the internet where they can find your competitor. You control the whole thing from start to finish. And that can also reduce your art development you know, costs. It can speed up the purchasing cycle, accelerate that purchasing cycle because you're kind of getting the art out of the way. No apparel job gets produced until the artwork is finalized. You know, you can't send artwork into Supercolor until you get the artwork nailed down. Um, and another, I think a really important thing is establishing value for your creative services. You know, you, you want clients leaning on you for ideas. It's really important. That's how you develop loyalty. And you can you can actually do that with actu- without actually talking to people too. There's, we have technology you'll see a little bit later where you can do that using internet-based technology. Um, and making it easier for your clients to buy from you, which which shuts out the competition. In today's day and age, people have tons of opportunities to purchase from other folks. And yeah, you, you know, you have that loyalty up until the point where you don't. And, you know, sometimes people will see something a little bit cheaper and they'll convince themselves that it's the same thing or you get buyer turnover. Um, if you've made it really easy for customers to buy from you, they'll repeat. Now, I think the example of the the folks that did the remodeling on two of my homes and are doing the remodeling on my mom's home right now, we keep going back to them because they just make it really easy and they got great ideas. They're really creative. They save us money. They tell us we're, you know, they're honest with us about, Hey, don't do that. You're not going to get that back out of the house. Well, I would consider doing this instead. Um, you know, Oh, by the way, we have this leftover tile from another job. I'll just charge you for the installation and I'll give you the tile. You know, that that's the kind of people you like to do business with. Um, and then also production readiness of graphics. When you pick a design from a stock design that's already ready for production, meaning it's color separated for screen printing, it's set up in layers so you can easily change the colors for a transfer. That's a really big issue. And eliminating the copyright issues, we talked a little bit about that, but just being able to reduce your production time and respond very quickly. So if you have an event or something comes up and you need to get a graphic out for you know state championship um, baseball team, and you hadn't really thought about you know doing anything for them because you didn't expect them to win and all of a sudden they win you can just go bust out a graphic real quick based on a stock design i helped a client do that not too long ago and by the time that i called her to see if she got the artwork she said i'm already printing <laughs> so I, I ended up doing the design for her. it worked out pretty good so um so where does this graphics flow stock art customizer fit in where you're gonna see the technology here in a second so here here's the thing i love about the stock art customizer we talked a little bit about if the barrier to entry to the apparel decoration business was being a graphic designer, having the skills to run these pro graphics program, you know, it's be pretty limiting. And so with the stock art customizer, anyone on your staff can do graphics, anyone, th- th- it doesn't matter. Um, doesn't require a professional graphics program. If you have a professional graphics program like Krill or Adobe or Affinity Express, um, Ex- Affinity Designer, sorry, Inkscape, any of these programs, it's not taking anything away from that because all of our stock graphics, you can edit those stock graphics and those programs too, but it's so much simpler to do it in our stock art customizer, you know, reducing that art development time, um, the turnaround time, being able to get things out really quick, less revisions because you can get, you can use the tool to do collaboration. So it's really easy to do a revision in graphics. So I'll show you how to do that a little bit. And you control both the sales and the art development process. So you're in control of the whole thing. You're leading the customer. And again, you've made it easier for your customer to buy from you. So let us do this. Let's get right to it. And I'll kind of show you the platform and then I'll show you how the stock art customizer works. So the first thing I want to talk about is graphics flow is a web app, which means you need one of two things. Um, you need to have a web browser on your computer that doesn't matter if it's Mac or Windows or you need to have a web browser on your phone or tablet and if you have any of those things you're in business I use graphics flow on my tablet computer all the time because frankly my work computer is for work and when I'm just doing browsing around the house I use my iPad it's just easier um, you know it's that you have it on your lap uh, my wife is um, 
uh, out of town for the next two weeks. She's been texting me all day with updates on her trip. Um, she's in London right now, and I'm totally jealous. Uh, and I'm just checking my phone and my iPad and seeing the progress. I don't need to go to my computer to do that. So the the concept here is you, you have a, a web-based application that is going to be, for lack of a better word, your graphics management. And what, what happens with graphics flow in its purest form is it's a depository of artwork. This is kind of the evolution of when we used to produce graphics, put them on floppy disks, then CDs, then DVDs, then downloads. Now our clients, they just log into their graphics flow accounts and they have access to everything. They don't have to, they don't have to go in and, um, you know, install anything to a computer. You get a new, I had a customer yesterday or she, <laughs> she was a personal friend. So of course she texts me for tech support. And she said, my computer died. I can't even boot it. I, I lost all my art, blah, blah. It's just like, just log into your graphics flow account. It's all sitting there. You have to do anything. You don't have to install anything. She's like, oh, really? I go, yeah, nothing's, you don't have anything installed to your computer. It's just, it's just a login. Just log in. All your art is saved there anyways. So she's like, oh man, that's awesome. So the, the web app, when you launch it, the, the first thing that you're going to see is what we call design ideas. And a design idea is a starting point. It's an interactive template. It's a, a place to start. It's the inspiration for creativity. It's where you select design and you work your little magic to personalize it to the needs of your customer. We are also a company that invented what we call production ready clip art for apparel decorators. And sometimes you just need a cool graphic. So you want to have a cool graphic that maybe has a tiger on it. And where are you going to get that tiger? Well, you can get that tiger in your graphics flow. Cause if you type in tiger, guess what you're going to get all kinds of cool tigers. And also, you know, you get all these different styles. This, this one right here, this came from our screen printing business many years ago. And that's to me, that's like the perfect classic old school tiger mascot. But if you needed something a little bit more progressive, that was kind of along the lines of the LSU. Um, Tiger, you could just go in here and using the stock art customizer, you can customize this clip art right now. If I want to change up the colors and make purple navy, I can do that. And then if I choose to, I can download this clip art image and use it with my pro graphics program. I can use this with, you know, Illustrator, Corel Draw, Affinity Designer. I could even download a PNG file and utilize it with Canva if I wanted to. So having access to this clip art library is awesome. And then the other thing that's awesome is fonts. We're a font foundry. And I was, I was just, I had a really good idea. I was just thinking about this. We, we have, we were, we have 560 fonts and graphics flow. And so when you sign up for your account, you download the master font set, you install them all and they show up in all of your graphics programs and they'll even show up in Microsoft word. And so it's kind of your sign on bonus when you sign up for graphics. So one of the things I was thinking of is we just recently did all these, I call them sloppy scripts. You guys have recognized it's all this kind of stuff. We did a whole series of these. I don't know how many of there are, but there's probably 50 of them. And yeah, customers tell me that she bought a, you know, she buys these on Etsy for like $15 a piece. I was like, wow, well, you've got 50 of them now, but you know, it'd be fun is just to have some templates that are just word art. That's just lines of text. Um, just, and then you get to switch out to the school script font. And if you wanted to put a fun little saying, you know, or do, you know, you know, with your vinyl cutter, create a little decal that said, um, home sweet home. You could do that. So I think we're going to do that. I think that's a, a good idea. And I'm going to talk to the art department. You can do that right now, but you just have to mute other design elements within the graphic. But I think it'd be cool to do some word art templates. And we're also known for our sports fonts. If you're watching television and there's all those sloppy scripts and you're watching television and you're seeing all these cool sports uh, scripts and block fonts, there's a good chance that those are our fonts because we've created a lot of the industry standard, you know, collegiate fonts. And we do some fun things like, um, doing fonts that are, um, we just did the American, um, this is Captain America font. That's kind of fun. And we did guardians of the galaxy and iron man and, you know, fonts that are kind of familiar and these make this, this font is probably my new favorite font makes great t-shirt graphics. So having those fonts, combining them with clip art, creating a design template that's editable, that's really where the magic happens. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how we can go in and edit a design. And I'm going to pick something that's a little bit more complicated from a point of view of doing it manually. Um, when, when we're in kind of encouraging you to work with your clients, one of the things that we, we make a big deal out of is don't look at the copy in the template, 
you, you, the copy means absolutely nothing. Don't look at the clip art because it's all interchangeable. Don't worry about colors. It's all changeable. Look for the composition. You know, do you connect with the design? Because this very cool little simple uh, martial arts design here could become a school design in just a couple of clicks. And same thing, I've done that with this 80 splatter print, which is actually a really fun design. I've done quite a few things with that. And the, the first thing you see when you log into your graphics flow is the new art drop. So we're getting to do it, get, getting um, to the point of doing an art drop here in about two weeks. We always do a preview video on Instagram and our YouTube channel. So people kind of see what's coming up. I was working on that video right before class today. So the, the, the thing that's important is you connect with the style. And in this particular situation, what I'm interested in is a style that's more like an athletic design. So I, I could go down here and just click on athletic and do that. But then I can also, if I was looking for something really specific, like I was going to do a cross country design, I could go down here and just type in cross or cross country and I could find the design. So the design I'm going to do is actually this design right here. And where this design becomes a little bit complicated is this is a chisel font. So it's actually not one font. It's three different fonts that stack on top of each other to create this chisel effect. So it's a little tricky to set this up and create this from scratch. Um, it's actually quite frustrating to get everything to line up and, and there's a technique to it. But because we've already done that work in Adobe Illustrator and we're editing on the native Illustrator file in the cloud, you don't have to do that work. So if I was going to customize this design, what I would do is I would just go over here to customize and where it says Mendocino, I'm going to just type in central and just hit enter and that's going to change the copy over there and i can nudge it over if i want to do that so there we go we've got the word central looking good um cross country we are going to change that to football and so what's happening is we're actually making the changes in, in a professional level graphics program on a server and we're just updating the previews and what's nice about that you can't get in trouble it's not like you can select in here and start moving stuff around and mess it up and you know, you're not using a graphics program, you're using a customizer that's allowing you to make these changes. And the net result is going to be a production ready file. So where it says Vikings, this is where I'm going to change all three fonts in all three layers to the word Cougars. And then everything's just going to line up perfectly, which is going to be pretty awesome. And there you go. So we've got that part out. Now, I don't think you want CC in the center of a football design. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to swap out the clip art. And let's say I didn't want the stars in here. I just wanted to get rid of the stars. I'm just going to click on the little mute button here and we'll mute the stars. But I like the stars. I think it looks good. And where the CC here is, I'm just going to click this little button right here. And it's going to be a replace button. And it's displaying, you know, the original clip art and the colors that are being used in the clip art. I can color the clip art and the text independently from the design. So if I want to delete colors, merge colors, or even introduce new colors, I can do that. But I'm just going to replace this clip art. And I figure just do a cougar mascot. So I'm going to go over here and type in cougar. And just like tigers, we've just had so many different options to choose from. And I'm just going to use this kind of helmet decal style cougar here, or really, you know, depending upon the kind of the feel that I want to go to. And then what I'm going to do is reduce the size of this a little bit. I think it's okay to overlap it a little bit. I think that's all right. Um, so we're going to do that. Maybe make that a little bit smaller. Yeah, that's about the right. And then I can either nudge it over. So if I want to move it over, I can either nudge it. Or I can just go in and put a new value in here and hit enter. And then kind of super nudge it. And I think I'm going to move it down just a little bit. Not a whole lot, but maybe move it down a little bit. And I think that's pretty centered up. So power tip right here, kind of a, a good smart move right here with this design would be to combine the colors from the clip art with the design template before changing the colors of the template. Here's what I mean. These four colors here, only one of these colors is repeated in the template and that's the white. So if I take this color and select it and I go to the blue in the template, look at I designed it. And then if I take this color and I go to the gold in the template, I just combined it. And do I want to make the chin piece white? 
maybe we'll see. We'll see. It'll look great or it won't. It actually, looks kind of cool. So we're gonna we're gonna leave it like that. So we've got the design built. I didn't have to go through the whole process of creating this in a pro graphics program, learning how to do funky envelopes and line up chisel fonts and weld text and do kerning and do text on a path to have central following a path. So I have to do any of that because there's a professional graphic designer that did all that for me. And so really at this point, the only thing I really need to do is localize the colors. And so I'm going to go over here. I'm going to keep the blue, but I'm going to take this color and why not? Let's make it orange. That'd be fun. So we'll just make that orange and wow, it's kind of pop in there. Looks awesome. And I'm done. That's it. I have a production ready file. If I wanted to get a transfer made from this, all I'd have to do is download a PDF and send it off to Supercolor um, and, and, you know, upload it, place my order. And, you know, in a few days later, I'm going to get a transfer. I just start pressing. That's how easy it is. And so be, before we get to that point, what we want to do, actually, I'm going to change the color on this. I'm going to change this back to red because I have another idea. So we're going to change that back to red. Before we, you know, do anything else with this, we're going to save the design. So I'm going to click on save. And then I'm going to save it to a folder in graphics flow. I'm going to save it in this back to school designs. We're just going to hit save. And then this is what I need to do next. Next, I need to get it to the customer because think, think about it like this. There's kind of two ways to work with customers on artwork. Way number one is to be proactive, right? Being proactive means I'm anticipating I'm going to do an order with them. Maybe I send over a couple of concepts in advance because it really doesn't take me very long to do that. And we get the artwork pinned down, we get the customer pinned down, and we get the competitor locked out. That's super duper smart way to do business. The other way is is more reactive, where you know maybe we let the customer go to our art portal, aha, uh -huh. because every graphics flow customer on an elite plan gets a portal so their customers can look through the artwork, so the customer can select the design, submit the changes they want send them into us and we can even embed this art portal into the website this is a little bit more passive where you're asking the customer to do a little bit more of the work and this is a wonderful collaboration tool because part of the reason that people are having to to get forced into doing custom artwork is they don't have a tool like this and when you have a tool like this guess what you don't have to do you don't have to be so reliant on custom artwork this is one of our customers that's embedded the art portal into their website and they just have it seamlessly embedded into their website. And I made the mistake of, I didn't realize I was on their account and I clicked on a design and I submitted it and I got caught. I immediately got an email from them saying, Hey, I saw you submitted a design. Tell us more about your project. And it was a personalized email from a salesperson. And I emailed her back right away. And I said, listen, this is Craig from graphics flow. Sorry. I wasn't paying attention. I used your site in a demo, um, but do me a favor. Um, don't take me out of your marketing sequence. I want to see what kind of emails you're sending. And I, I'm still getting their emails. It's wild. This, this is months ago. And I still get an email like once a week that's kind of nudging me. Um, it's very creative what they do. They'll do mock-ups and a mock-up over. They'll feature products. Very, very clever. But they they built a whole business is specifically in the school market, which really isn't their primary focus. They built a whole business around this concept of this portal. And the portal is where customers can submit designs for customization. So this is another way of doing it. So just to kind of recap here, this portal is using embed code and it's embedded into a customer's website. This portal is just redirected to a domain I own, know that I own called craigmertens.com. And this is the, the portal that all of our customers have. And if you don't have a website, guess what? You have a contact form now. You have you can add other links to this. You can use this as your website, which is pretty darn awesome. So back to our design. So we have the design. Maybe this came in through an art request through our portal. We need to get it back to the customer to approve it. And we're taking a proactive stance. We're getting the artwork in front of them. We're trying to get everything locked down. So we've got a little bit more lead time. And, you know, lead time is important because, you know, what if, if everything's a rush, 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 then when it's kind of like the boy who cried wolf, right? All of a sudden you get a big order that comes in that's a rush order, but you don't have the capacity to produce it because you, you didn't quote enough lead time, right? So if, if you, you know, can kind of consolidate the amount of time on the artwork, you can give yourself a little bit of lead time too, which is great. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add this to an art approval. 
and I'm going to go over here and I'm going to create a new art approval, which I'm just creating a web page right now. I just created a web page and we're going to call this Central Cougars Football 2023. There you go. And I created a web page and then I can send a link to this web page over the customer. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go over here and I'm going to go to my art approval. And here's the web page that I created. And I can add a couple other football designs in here. So if I want to add a couple other designs just for them to look at, I can just go over here to plus and say, hey, let's let's add a couple other football designs in there. So I've created a gallery. So I created a gallery with one design that I localized for them. And then I'm creating another, I'm adding a couple more football designs in here. And just to give them a few ideas, give them a couple looks. And I'm going to send this page over to them. And the coolest part is I can change the background colors all of all of these for visualization. And I'm going to move that one to the top. So we're going to move that one up. And I'm going to switch out the background color on this. I set this up for gray. And I'm going to put it on kind of an ash gray. There we go. And all I need to do to send this to the customer is hit share. And so I'm going to do something kind of fun. I'm going to hit invite. And I could just put an email in here and fire it off through our email system, but I'm going to do something kind of fun for the folks that are on the live webinar. I'm going to grab a link. And if I grab a link, there's three types of links. Link type number one is view only. So I can send this out to five or 10 people um, or post it to Instagram and nobody can see each other's comments. It's not interactive. They can see, but they can't comment. If I send a commenting link, I'm going to get in in inundated with comments because that's what I'm sending right now. And every comment that you guys fill out on this is going to come to me. And it's always interesting to see what you guys have to say. And then if I'm doing final approval of the graphic, I'm going to send them a comment and approve link so they can approve. So I'm going to select a comment link. I'm going to hit copy. And I go to webinar, you have a little chat button here. And if you go to your little chat console and you're on the live, you can click on that and make comments if you'd like. So. When I send this off to the customer, if they're looking at it and they make a comment, I'm notified in the app, but I'm also notified by email. So if the, you know, coach says, love the design, love this design. Can you put this on an Oxford t-shirt? Okay. So they send me the comment. I get the comment. I reply back. Sure thing. Just refresh your browser. Okay. And I send them the comment and just go and change the color right here. I'm just going to put this onto Oxford. And if I wanted to, if I had a program capable of creating a mock-up, um, let's say maybe, you know, Inksoft or I'm using Placeit or Canva or something like that, I can upload the mock-up in here too, which is kind of awesome. So that that's the whole process. And I think I teased a little bit earlier. One of the things that you can do is variations. So because I save this file, if, if I want to come back to this file in the future and I've saved it to my art, and if you recall, I saved it into this BTS folder right here. And if I want to come back to this file in the future and send a version of this over to my customer, maybe change the school or the colors of the whole thing. I can do that because all I have to do is just click on customize and I'm going to reinitiate the customization process. So maybe they're looking at it and they're not vibing with the mascot and we'll just click on change right here and replace this with a different mascot. I can make a variation of this design. It's kind of a cool mascot too. Yeah, it's kind of awesome. So we can do that it needs to be a little bit bigger, right? And then we'll nudge that over a little bit. And I think it's okay to have that overlap. Let's see if we, we like the overlap. I'll probably, yeah, it looks good. I'll probably nudge it up just a tad. There we go. And we get this exactly the way we want it. And again, I can consolidate the colors from the clip art with the template right here. Check it out. So that color becomes the navy. 
this color becomes, I don't think it's going to look good in red. I think I'm going to make all of these details white. Yep, that's exactly what I need to do. And, you know, you want to change the entire color scheme? You can. Maybe we want to do, instead of doing this navy blue, we want to do more something like a royal. That's how easy it is. And when, and when I go to save this, check out what happens when I go to save. When I go to save, it's going to say, do I want to update the, the original design? No, I don't. I want to save it as a new customized design. And we'll just call this Cougars Football 02. And we'll save it into that same folder. Save. So I'm creating variations. And so what I can do, that's a really smart thing to do. If I'm prospecting with schools or even small businesses, I create one template, kind of do the heavy lifting on the first template, and then just go and name drop variations. And what a great prospecting tool for your customers. So one of the things that I always encourage people to do with their graphics flow account is to create galleries for, you know, let's say it's corporate, right? So I'll create a little corporate gallery and maybe do some patch layouts. And I can take this little corporate gallery right here and send this off to customers as this inspiration and a nail down their design. This is actually, I think this was the design I used in my trade show t-shirt. Um, pretty, sh pretty sure that was part of it. There you go. And so I can send this out to anybody I want to, just to kind of get them thinking beyond doing just their logo on shirts, dealing with corporate clients. You do something that's more trendy and not, and you can use that to populate a web store. There's all kinds of fun things you can do with that. But the other thing that you can do is you can link this into your portal. So with your portal, if you go to your portal settings, you can add links. Let's see, actually what I want to do here is go to my settings. So manage my portal. And this is where I can add a link. So I can add additional links to my portal. So look at all the links I've got in here, including that corporate one. And that corporate showcase, I'm going to drag that up to the top here. And I've got links to all these showcases. So if I want to feature specific types of art, I can do that in my portal. And, you know, going in and changing like the visual aspects of your portal. And I've been doing this gray for a while. I'm, I'm not crazy about the gray. So I think I'm going to go back to like a kind of a charcoal. The green in there, I'm going to go to come more like a charcoal color in here. Let's see. We'll either love it or we won't. And I'm going to update it. And let's see what's going on here. Go back to my portal. And here's my portal. Yeah, it looks good. And remember, I, well, I didn't, I didn't save the changes for the corporate one. So I needed to save that. But here's that corporate showcase. And when the end user is logging in, they're not going to see all the peripheral stuff in here. They have to add their email into this. So we've captured their email. Um, basically at that point, we've got a lead, which is to me is awesome. So this is, this is the way people use the tools of their graphics flow account, but there's a whole nother level to this. And the whole nother level is now you've got the artwork, you've downloaded the artwork, you've sent it off to Supacolor, they've created the transfers. So imagine doing this, you're working with the school group or a small business, doesn't matter who it is. And you, you, you're talking to the buyer and you, you say, hey, listen, I have this new technology. It's called a hybrid digital transfer. It's really exciting, great quality. It's more durable than screen print. It's actually a, a premium decoration quality, better than screen printing. And you can absolutely say that about super color transfers. And when, when you're talking to the customer, say, hey, listen, we can set up a little web store for you. And then when we set up the web store, what we're going to do is we're going to have you pay a deposit of $300 and that's going to guarantee you 100 transfers that we're going to draw against. And we're actually going to print up these shirts once a week. So we're going to publish this web store. And then once a week, we're going to collate all the orders together. And then I'm going to do all the pressing. And then I'm going to either drop them off to you or ship them to you. And then you can distribute it out to your employees or your team members. That is just an amazing way to do business. And in order to do that, you have to have an e-commerce platform and you have to do a revenue share. And there's a huge advantage to doing a revenue share. Let me, let me set up a, a store and, and while I'm doing that, I'll, uh, we'll talk a little bit about revenue share and do a revenue share. People aren't, they're not price shopping you. So if, if going rate, you know, wholesale on a t-shirt in your market is 
six dollars and fifty cents, you're not making any money on that. There's there's no money to be made on that. And there's there's always some person in every community or that you compete with that's willing to work pretty close to free or on tiny margins. But if you dictate the retail price and you set up the 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 revenue share and you just you tell the customer, hey, listen, you don't have to commit to any kind of inventory. Um, you, you know, we're just going to kind of print as we go. And if, if we do that, guess what? You're just going to get checks once a month. You don't have any risk. You don't have to collect money. You don't have to deal with taxes. You don't have to deal with paper order forms. You don't have to do any of that. So what I've just done is I've logged into my Inksoft account. Inksoft is one of the three companies in, in, Inksoft, in the Inktabo brand, a uh, group of brands. So company number one, graphics flow, that is your graphics management platform. Inksoft is your e-commerce platform and Printavo is your shop management platform. There are three independent companies. They are built separately, but they work beautifully together. And so when you sign up for Graphicsful, you don't get an Inksoft account. When you sign up for Inksoft, you don't get a Graphicsful account, but a big number of Inksoft users also use Graphicsful. And I noticed Don Kennedy is on here and he just signed up for Inksoft because he was using Graphicsful as well. So welcome aboard Don. So what, what we have here is a web store and I'm logged into my account. And when you create a web store in the Inksoft platform, you go through a little wizard. It asks you some questions. It asks you to upload the logo and it creates this, this shell right here. And then what you do is you add components. So like one of the components that I added to the shell, let's go ahead and delete this and I'll show you how I can re-add it, is a countdown ticker that this store is going to be open for a period of time. So I'm just going to add that countdown ticker back and let's see here. It could be a fundraiser where we put in an amount of money too, and it's showing you how much money has been raised. It will even, um, keep track, um, of the, um, amount of revenue that's generated. I'm going to move this to the top. So I'm just going to grab this right here and I'm going to move this up to the top right below the banner here. So we're going to hit done. So there's my ticker. Um, if I want to change the countdown number of days, I'm just going to go to edit, manage end date, and I'm going to go to my calendar and we're going to switch this out to July and it'll be July 14th. will be my end date. And so I'll run this store for the next 22 days. Um, maybe I'll do my printing once a week. I'll deliver all the products that I'm pressing with my transfers and then I'll close the store promptly 22 days from now. And then I'll let it sit for two weeks and I'll pop the store back up open and I'll say, Hey, guess what? We've reopened the store and we've added some new colors and we've added some new designs and we've added some new, um, styles. What a cool way to do business. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that graphic we created and we're going to add it to our store. So I'm going to add another component right here. And that component that I'm going to add is just a featured product component. And we're just going to feature a singular product. So I'm going to start from scratch and I'm going to move this to the top right below the fundraising component. And then I'm going to save this layout. So this is all updated. I've saved it and I can change the color scheme on here too, but we need to get a product in here. So what I need to do now is I need to go back over to my store admin right here. I'm going to go to my store admin and we're going to upload that artwork. So I'm going to say create new. I'm going to upload some artwork. I'm going to upload the file that I created. I can't remember. Did I download a PDF file of that? Let's go to my art. Let's go to BTS. This is the design right here. Belize, and I'm going to download a PDF file. I think, can't remember if I did this already. There we go. So we've downloaded that and then I'm going to upload it so I can use it with my store. So I'm going to say upload a print file. I could upload an embroidery file as well. So I'm going to go to my downloads folder and there it is right there. I'm going to hit open and what it's doing, it's actually, when it's uploading the file, it's also setting it all up in color layers. 
because this is a vector-based graphic. So it's tracking all the vector layers. So I can actually change colors of these vectors. This is one of the things that's really cool about utilizing an e-commerce platform that is specific to apparel decoration and personalization. Because once, once it's opened this file up now, I can go over here and create colorways. And we're going to show you why colorways is important in a second. So I'm going to add this t-shirt right here. We're going to add the t-shirt. I'm going to add that graphic because that's set up really nicely to go on gray. But I'm going to add a new color. And the new color I'm going to add is navy right here. So we're going to add navy. But I need to create a variation of the colors. And I can do that right in Inksoft because it'll let me create a new colorway. And I think all of the navy should actually become red. I think if I consolidate the navy right here and we make that red, I think it'll, I think it'll look pretty good. Let's see here. Got that. We'll take this navy and we'll make that red. Hit done. And so we basically created a variation of the colors for use on navy. So I didn't have to go and bring it back into graphics floor or whatever. All I had to do is just click on Navy here and then click on the red variation right there. And we got everything ready to rock and roll and two color variations. There we go. Hit create product. Add the pricing and any details. Now, if I'm not sure I'm going to be using Gildan shirts, I'm going to take out Gildan because I way have flexibility to use any 100% cotton tee. I'm going to put a 25%, $25 price in here. Shirt's three bucks, transfer's three bucks. I got six bucks into it. So I've got $19 left over. I'm going to give them a 20% uh, revenue share. So I'm going to give them four bucks. And guess what I get to pocket? I get to pocket $15 every time they place an order. And this is the magic of e-commerce because you just made it super easy for that customer to buy from you. So we've got that added. I'm going to go back to that little placeholder right here and go to manage products. And I'm going to add this product right here to that placeholder. And I'm going to hit save. And I'll send you guys a link to the store real quick. So if you're on the live, you can guys can go to the store and play. Don't place an order because we're not shipping it. Okay, this is a live store. You can check out, you can pay. So here is the, the item right here. They can click on it. They can see what it looks like in different colors. So here's the navy variation. Here's the ash variation. There you go. Notice it's creating the virtual sample. I don't have to, if I have two items that have 10 different colors each, I don't have to create 20 virtual samples in Canva and upload them into my e-commerce product. It has the database of all of the common vendors that people buy from Samar, Alpha Broad, or Augusta. It has the product photography, the up-to-date pricing, the descriptions, all the size ranges, all the color ranges. So that's what an industry-specific e-commerce platform can do for you. And there's one part of this that's even more awesome, and this is where it really starts to work great with the Stock Art Customizer. Because I'm logged in as an admin, but if I log in as an end user, and so let's pretend for a moment that I am the buyer and I am Craig, the president of the Central Cougars Booster Club. When I, I can set up an account for my customer, so I can set up an account for Craig and we'll call Craig Greg. So Greg Mertens is the, the, the now the official Booster Club person and I'm Craig Mertens. And if your name is Craig, your nickname is Greg. So you know that already. So when Greg logs into his account, he has visibility on any quotes that we might have out. So maybe we're doing a quote for some actual shirts that we're printing up in advance to be at the little booster club table at the football game or whatever. So Greg can go in and look at his quote that's out there because we can set up a quote through Inksoft to do that. And he can go and look at the quote, look at the art, Prove everything, see a bigger picture of the art if he wants to. And everything looks good. Sizes, quantity, pricing looks good. Greg, hit, Greg hits approve, puts his name in, submits approval, and is immediately prompted to pay in advance. You can set up the payment terms any way you want. 
100% prepaid by credit card, ACH, 50% prepaid, balance automatically charges in 15 days. You can do all of that and you're getting paid up front. And even cooler than that is they have visibility on their past orders. So here's all the orders they've placed. And if they need to place a reorder, they don't have to even call you. They can just go over here to their last time they ordered it. They can see all the details. They can see even see the graphic sizes, quantities, all that fun stuff and hit reorder. And it automatically sends me a notification to reorder the graphic. Um, if you want to get crazy, if you want to get really crazy, then you go kind of next level because remember we uploaded the graphic in there. So we can upload the graphic into the Inksoft designer and then we can name drop it. So if we went over here and we go to design now, and let's say they take this design right here that we created in graphics flow. And this has a live piece of text. So I'd have to add the text in the Inksoft designer. So the text isn't going to come in live. So the part that would come in live would be, or the part that's going to come in is this. And I've just added the word central soccer in here using the text tool and designer. And that gives the ability to, for the customer to edit and name drop the template. So now they come in here, go volleyball. And they've edited the template. They can save the art. They can check out, they can pay, it'll give them a quote, they're done. So, you know, in today's day and age, not only is it important to make it streamlined and easy to do the artwork and get ideas in front of customers, but also the whole purchasing and buying experience. And so I wanted to show you how the whole kind of ecosystem works between whether you're using Inksoft as your e-commerce platform or you're using another e-commerce platform. In, in my opinion, it's very challenging and difficult to do commerce at a professional level um, in our industry without some form of e-commerce platform, even if it's just basic rudimentary e-commerce, it's it's really challenging. And you know, it was it was interesting to me at the the show we had a, a client that signed up for Inksoft, and it was, it, <laughs> their comment was really interesting. They said, "I'm tired of losing business because my customers say, listen, can you do a web store for me? I need to be able to do a web store so my employees can go and buy their uniforms or my.'" Um, people in our booster club can go and buy their swag or spirit wear or, you know, good example, the family reunion thing. So all the family members can go and, and purchase all the swag. It's so critically important to make it easy for that customer to purchase. And th this particular client, they just had had enough. They'd lost too many customers to people that were doing stores. And they were like, I gave in, we got to do this. And they signed up. So that, that might not be the case for you. But it's something at least down the road you should be thinking about. What is the the graphics solution that I'm going to be offering? What is the solution I'm going to be offering for e-commerce? And you already know my opinion on the solution for uh, purchasing transfers, and that is Supercolor and their hybrid digital transfers. And if you're if you're not with Supercolor already, the thing that I'm going to recommend that you all do go to the Supercolor website. And then go in and just click on get started and it'll walk you through a little kind of a configuration to get your account set up. And then they'll send you this lovely little sample kit with test samples in it that you can keep press at home. So if you're, you know, doing this for, you know, professional and you're reselling, which I think most of you are, just click on that and then set up your account. They'll send you the sample kit. Just an absolutely great way to get started. And this is how we do all of our merch for our business, for all of our employees. It's all done with super color transfers and guess who gets to do all the heat pressing me because I'm the guy with the heat press <laughs> so, and it's not so fun in the summer in the garage. I think I'm going to drag the press into the kitchen the next time I have to press shirts for our next trade show. It's be a little easier, but this is the workflow. This is the whole concept. And I wanted to expose you guys to all these ideas. If you like what you're seeing here and all the kind of the business acumen stuff that we're doing and the, the, you know, kind of giving you ideas on how to grow your business. This is the, the general theme of webcasts that we do. So thank you so much for attending the webcast today, and we hope to see you soon.